I like it when it just I like it when we just kind of pick up and go, and it's not like the formal introductions get you like, okay, you know, you get like all nervous. I'm ready. Let's go. But yeah, so the Alvarez brothers, we're live. We're live. We're here. Oh wow, man! Thank you guys so much for coming. Oh, thank you for inviting us, man. It's a pleasure, man. We there, love you. You know that. Well, I love you guys, too. There's been a lot of people that have been really like, when are you going to have them on? When are you going to talk about it? We want to like get, we're, t- we're diving deep into like the past and everything that's been going on. We had Jaime. I did one with Jeremy. And so it's like, now let's take it all the way back. Like, let's get deep into the roots of the Fuego in it. And it's you two. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, a lot of these people out here, it's like you guys are these two incredible passionate entrepreneurs and uh there's a lot of times people have a dream in their life about making a difference Mm -hmm. in their community making a difference whether that's in their in their city or in for us in the soccer community but man you guys started it all why why we have no idea (laughs) you want to you want to take this one or you want me to Uh, kind of position well i'll take it and then we'll just go back and forth sure i think um Really, really, it all started when I was on the bench at in Mexico City, and I was watching. I believe, I think it was the game where we were when I was on the bench playing against Pumas in Unam. I don't know if it was there or we were in Monterrey, and I was on the bench. And, and who were you playing for at the time? Uh, a team called Toros Nessa. Toros. Yeah, Toros Nessa, which was the team of the the '86, '87. I mean, we were the team to beat. Um, 96, 96. 96, damn. Putting myself at more years. <laughs> 96, 97, yeah. 96, 97. Yeah, so I, I just started comparing some of the players that we had here. And I just started, like, saying, you know what? I know this is at another level. And uh, with an exception of these one, two, three, four players, I think we could hang. I think we could do well. Uh, and it kind of just started like j- just me comparing players from here to the players over there, and that's before how. Before you played professionally in Mexico, mm-hmm. you were playing with. Well, I really started playing. Um, it was in Mexico, right? Uh-huh. Mexico for a team called Independiente. I- Independiente Azul. Independiente Azul from. Uh, as a Tony was on the team too. Yeah, I yeah. sucked. That was the worst player. Oh, yeah. So I took pride actually on he that. was, yeah, but yeah. he was the best looking player too. There you, go. you know what I mean? Still to this day. Tony was a cute baby. Like he was. So he's I look like a girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was I don't a, take pride in that. He was so cute. Seriously, he was so cute that I think it, uh, we we were living in a ranch and he had two girlfriends and they're both twins. Yeah, wow. las cuatas. Las cuatas. They're, they're yeah, my it, girls. It, it, it was in a, in a ranch called La Stancia. Did they know about each other? Oh, oh they, yeah, they, come on. He held their hands. Yeah. At the same time. At Check the same time, he has a picture them. with him holding their hands, and <laughs> they're all proud the fact that he's their boy, or, you know, their boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Tony was more of the pretty boy back then. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, I have a very beautiful sister, and very, you know, Tony's a very handsome. It's, I want to go back before soccer, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, my mom, they were so gorgeous. You know, they both have green eyes. You know, beautiful skin, smile, everything. Mm. And I was the ugly one. You know, I don't know what happened to me. You know, I don't <laughs> know. So I have no idea some... what happened to me. But I, yeah. I, as I get he older, developed. I got a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. But my mom says she would actually hide me sometimes. No. <laughs> we laugh about it because it's to us it's funny. You know what I mean? But, you know, there's no depression at all. Trust me, not at all. But, I mean, it, it, it's there were two beautiful babies, my sister Ruby and Tony, when they were small, you know. And where were you born? We were born actually in Sanger, were we? Yeah, in yeah. Sanger Hospital, Sanger hospital. Uh, community hospital, which yeah. is no longer there. But um, it, it, we we resided here in in, in Fresno County uh, as children, and then all of a sudden, my mom and dad, you know, unfortunately, it, it happens. You know, parents split, and we moved back home. Uh, she wanted to teach us about our culture and mm-hmm. learn about the ranch style and figure out ways to survive uh, with, with, you know, primary needs. Um, and so we went back home, and uh, we had no idea what we were getting into back then. Uh, we had no idea what we were getting into when we started Fuego. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, when we went back home, um, he had tremendous talent in sports, um, and, and everything he did was just uh, top-notch. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we had this team. We, we, we became part of this team called Independiente Azul. And so uh, that's where his, he started. Uh, I can guarantee you that he had against the most shots on goal because we had the worst defense. <laughs> yeah, we had the worst defense. He would block everything. And in Mexico... Yeah. I just uh, like blocking. I don't know why. Just, yeah. In Mexico, yeah. the, 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 the Las Canchas. I don't like yeah. running, I think. That's no. Where, I don't yeah. like, I'm a good sprinter. You could sit there and yell at everybody. I hate running long distance. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. Said every fat person to ever live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Including no, me. Even when I was skinny, I would count the steps. I literally would count the steps and I would stop. Uh, I guess at this point, I was like, you know what? I'm, this is not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, we started back then. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's when you knew you had like this deep passion for uh, soccer. Like, talent, and man. It was extreme just amount of above talent. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. We mm-hmm. had the worst team in the league, uh, but he would block so many shots, and people would be like, man, who is this little kid? Uh, the, the, the soccer pitch would be all dirt. And the only reason why the other teams would score on him is because by the time they took so many shots, it'd be so freaking cloudy and dust. <laughs> I remember that. Remember that? Yeah, uh, like we would come out. We wouldn't even see. And then next thing you know, it's like, where's the ball? It'd be in the back of the yeah. net. <laughs> Couldn't see. You know what because, I mean? because it was just uh, too many shots on goal. Right, right. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Anyway, so. Yeah, we, so, um, you know, fast forward a little bit. Uh, that's when I started, like, kind of comparing players and. And just, you know, being on the bench, you learn a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you know a lot. You, you learn what you need, what you're lacking, where your strengths are. Um, I had a very good mentor by the name of Paul Larios, uh, which he was a national team player, could have been two or three times. Uh, tremendous talent. But he had an IQ and a feel for the game and ball and passion that really, like, I've never met or seen anybody have. Um, he taught me very good. He gave me very good pointers, you know. Um, uh, he told me w- what to do, and uh, to be a great goalkeeper, you must risk. You have to risk. If you do not risk, you know, you're not going to win. You're not going to look good as a goalkeeper. Mm. So a lot of times it's not guessing. It's more like having a feel of where the ball's going to go and kind of setting the opponent up so that he could go that route, mm-hmm. you know. He really taught me a lot of things, you know, in the in the box. But um, uh, he passed away, I think, last year, right? Yeah. Last yeah. year, passed away. But great mentor. Um, he was 1986, 1982. Uh, in the World Cup. Mexican national starting, team. Yeah, starting goalkeeper in yeah. the World Cup. Wow. He was Cisco's 80, mentor. 86, 90. He was, in, he was a starting. That's was in, it 90? No. It was 82, 82 and 86, and 86. I think. Yeah. I think he was. I mean, it's incredible. It's, so it's like as a, as a player who's come from kind of a small town and then mm-hmm. back, you know, playing back home in Mexico, it's like when you became a professional athlete, I think you know, we talk to a lot of people and it's their dream, right? Everybody grows up dreaming to be a professional athlete. It is. Wanting to even be in the locker room, be on the bench, mm-hmm. doesn't matter, travel with the team. I mean, yeah. what, what, was that, what did that experience teach you and, and how did it really kind of motivate you in the next phase of your life? You know what, before I answer that question, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, um, I'm going to go back a little bit so it could have a good meaning to, to you know, besides when you're up there, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think failing, you know, really failing and not, you know, and not uh, giving up um, really motivated me to prove not only them but everybody else wrong. You know, I, 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 I never stopped believing in myself. I, I'm all, I've always been a dreamer. Like that, I could accomplish, yeah. uh, regardless of what the odds are. I really don't care. I know what I have, and I and I'm so eager to prove it. So I think you know the experience uh, when the MLS first started, when I went to the open tryouts um, with San Jose Earthquakes. You know, they told me straight out. They said, you know what, you're more talented than that Kramer. I don't know if Kramer, if you were there. You know, <laughs> he got picked up on the first round. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, coming from a from a D1 school, it's always important. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, I was a you know NAIA. Nobody mm-hmm. knew Fresno about Pacific. me. Yeah. yeah, but uh, uh, coaches pulled me aside and they say, "Listen, you just need a little bit more experience. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. Mm-hmm. You you're much faster. You're you're quicker. You you know you have better tools than what we have. But unfortunately, you know, since the MLS is starting, we can't risk. We have to go with the safe." 
which mm-hmm. made sense. A D1 player. A D1 player, proven. Right. We just can't afford to take a risk. Mm-hmm. So I took that in a positive way, and I said, you know what? I'm going to work on some of the, my weaknesses and get more games in. So that's why I think I started playing, like, seriously. every. I would never play two games a day because I don't believe in that. I really believe it's like prostituting yourself as a player, you know, right. to play on. Yeah, you this. can't perform at your highest level. You can't perform at your highest level. And to me, you know, it, it, any player that does that really cheats himself, mm. cheats, cheats himself and their team. You just can't do that. If you want to have, you know, the best performance of your life, you have to like play one, one game every two days, you know, mm-hmm. because in, rea- in reality, your body takes a toll. Right, it takes a toll, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it, it, it was one of those situations. So. Yeah. Uh, so from going from that experience and yeah. seeing some failure, then it took mm-hmm. you to a new place of, of definitely, learning how to have success. Definitely. You know, I came back. I told Jaime, I told Jaime Ramirez because that's where I was playing. I said, you know what? This is what happened. And I was disappointed, you know. Yeah. And I think like six months later, later, if I'm correct, uh, me and Jose Delgadillo spoke. And God. we just decided to go to Mexico with zero contacts, <laughs> not knowing anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, no one, we didn't, you know, we just, we stayed in a city called Ciudad Azteca, which uh, his aunt lived there. And that's where we stayed. And we just opened the newspaper every day and mm-hmm. looked for opportunity. And I remember uh, there being an ad saying Toros Nessa was having an open tryout. So, how many people showed up, Cisco? Over 5,000 people showed 5, up. 5,000. Yeah. 5,000. Wow. How and ridiculous was that? That's nuts. And if you ask Copy today, we were, actually playing on dirt rocks Mm -hmm. like mountains of dirt just piled up you know uh, mud everywhere it just wasn't the right atmosphere or it wasn't the right i mean i'm used to playing on grass right you come from grass and then you go to someone takes you to a field that caliber looks like a you know like you know golden yeah yeah, golden compared to that so um but you know what helped me there i was prepared mentally so where i failed and the advice i took from uh, I think it was Ziggy Smith, the coach at San Jose, but it, it was some other coach that told me. You know, it was somebody else. Uh, I'm very bad with names, so I, I <laughs> tend to forget. Um, that experience, that experience really helped me, mm-hmm. helped me to understand what I needed to do, and that I couldn't afford to, to, to just have them score on me. So I went. I think it was 13 games or 11 games without a goal. Mm-hmm. That's when they pulled me aside and they said, Who, "Like, where do you come from?" You know, it was Enrique Mesa that called me up. Enrique Mesa, great player in Mexico. Um, he uh, he was on the, uh, the Mexican national team, very well known. He pulled tremendous me aside. Coach. He was like, yeah, tremendous coach. He goes, where do you come from? You know, uh, told him a little bit about, about me. Um, he told me straightforward. He goes, listen, you stay here. I will put you in first division in one month. And sure wow. enough, that's what he did. Wow. That's what he did. And, you know, it's, it's going with no f- – from nothing, no contacts, mm-hmm. just you know, mentally being strong and and just just you know, committed to the game. I think that's what really, you know, helped me. You know, helped me, and obviously the the support that Gapi's family gave me there to you know have a home to stay there. Um, you know, good thing that the dollar went so far there. A little you know farther, I mean? yeah. Man, right. I was like yeah. out of funds the first month. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So you're really trying to find ways to like, you know, make it. So right. um, once I'm there. Once I'm there in Toros Nessa, you know, and I remember, I, you know, they're saying, hey, we're going to sign contracts. But they told me, you're going to sign two contracts because you're going to sign the second division contract. Then you're going to sign the first division contract. So I go in there, and I think the first, the second division contract was at 9 a.m. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to negotiate, blah, 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 in my head. Just, mm-hmm. just thinking I'm a, a pro, thousand I'm a ways star. what I'm to do. I'm in the first yeah? division. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So... Sure enough, uh, I was really disappointed how they handled it. But it's understandable now that I look back, you know, it's a small team. It's not a big team like America Chivas and all those sure. huge organizations. Uh, uh, they have the contract filled, and they said, uh, this is what it is. Everybody had the same contract. I see the contract, and if I remember correctly, I think it was 900 pesos a month. Wow. When I saw it, I was like, my world just came caving down, you know? Mm. And I told him, I go, listen, I can't survive off this. There's no way I could give you my best. So if I can't give you my best, I can't stay. I told him straight out. I didn't even care about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I just said, you know what? This is not what I thought it was. So I walked out. But 
deep down in my head, I knew they were going to come back for me, you know? Right. Um, it's poker. So it's poker. It's kind of, kind of poker. Yeah. Everybody else was very desperate, you know? Yeah, so they're and, willing to sign and just be pro. Sure. And I understand it. So my Master called me in. He goes, mm. listen, man, sign that contract. Because I think they wanted everybody else to sign. Mm-hmm. Sign that contract. And then you'll sign a second <laughs> second division contract. Mm. And then the first division contract. I see. And they kept their word. Oh, wow. And I think I was able to maintain that way, you know, during that time. So it, it just negotiations are tough there. I mean, it's, you know, everybody's battling for those one, two positions. Mm. And you have millions of people you know, that are, are, are trying for that dream. You know? And it doesn't seem that long ago, but you think about the evolution of soccer in this country and in Mexico over the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. It's it's leaps and bounds, right? Even yeah, from the does. time where you're, yeah. you know, MLS at that point, what, maybe had eight teams? Yes. Ten teams, yeah. something yeah. like that. So there's not a lot of roster spots out there. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they've got the pick of the mill on who they want to sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's not like many of these guys are going over to play in Europe. So it's like they can kind of take advantage in a way of, of mm-hmm. player salaries and stuff like that. And they like do. That. And they do. And, yeah. you know, the difference of Mexico is, too, that there's so many players from South America, Central America, uh, that are trying to make the roster too, and it's it's. I mean, you're you're not you know now it's even worse from what I heard, you know because some of the players I played with now, they they're there and they're they're telling me like look there's like several pro teams that aren't even signed or pro players. Mm. There's just so much soccer you know they're so rich in so soccer. So there's just extras. Yeah. There's just extras yeah. everywhere you know, wow. and these are you know Central Americans, South Americans, and they could play very well too. So it's. Mm-hmm. You know they have a lot to choose from. You know? Yeah. So you so you saw well, and Tony for you like your 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 brother's gone and, and he's playing. I mean, what does that feel like? How's the family feeling? How's the family supporting? Him? What does it mean for you as a as a brother and as a family member to know like, man, my my brother's on the biggest stage. At that time, all I did was uh, support him because he was alone out there, and uh, he, we've always been like uh, very very tight. Um, we, we've never really separated. And when you do separate, even when you separate, you're still tight uh, together. Uh, so when there, there were times when he was struggling uh, mentally because, you know, he's out there by himself. And he's a kid, man. Mm. He was just a little boy. I mean, you're out there at, uh, how old were you at that time? 21? 22? 21, 20, 21, 22, I believe. Right around yeah, that yeah. time. And and you're in Mexico City, a city with 30 million people, you you know, and, and you you don't know anybody. He's with Gapi. Gapi, um, one of the most, uh, just one of the brothers mm-hmm. of, of, uh, of our life. And... You know he's out there, and he was out there with his with uh, Gapi's family, um, but it was still it was hard. I mean, um, we we came from uh, a background where our mom passed away at a very early state uh, stage in life, and so uh, you know we kind of learned how to be alone. But you know now you're in a professional setting. Um, you're you're coming from um, you know a small town. Uh, but we've never had a small town mm. mentality. Mm-hmm. We've always had like this vision uh, of of growth and development and seeing talent in someone. And you know, anyway, um, not why? To get well, off. well, no, but that's important for people to realize because I think there's a lot of people out there who have the dream of owning a business. Have mm-hmm. a dream of being a professional athlete. And it's that mentality and that mindset that you guys have that helps you push for that. So, like, where mm-hmm. does that come from? Our from mother. my mom. My mom. Yeah. Yeah. mom. Our mother yeah. always taught us uh, how just, to serve. Never to settle. Never to settle. Yeah. Yeah. Never to settle and that you could do whatever you want. Yeah. Just put your mind to it. You really do. And, you know, it's funny. She's. I didn't quite understand that when she said it. Uh, and then, you know... I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, by the way. So the reason I, I mentioned that... I thought you that, were going to say Michael Jackson. No, I did, no. too, because the jacket. I, well, I love... Yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously, I don't know if anybody knows this, but when he passed away, I cried for days. Jackson, Michael Jackson. Oh, heck yeah. I was there. He's the king. Oh. I, I wouldn't mention that. I love <laughs> Michael moment. Jackson. No, no, no. Great I even music. went to his funeral. Really? I was out there for like a day. And, wow. And I took my son, Jordan, and I go, you want to come with me? 
He goes, uh, okay. Let's not get off so <laughs> yeah. No, hey, let's go down every rabbit hole he can. No, no, no. It was, it was, I was crying the whole, I, I'm still like tearing right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like when he passed away. It's just, it an icon, for it's sure an icon, an icon of a generation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. once God in a lifetime type of personality and, and talent, for sure. But you yeah. were mentioning Michael Jordan. But yeah. Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan. Where are they going with that? <laughs> okay, well, yes, I was, um, so Michael Jordan, you know, I, I've always looked up to him to what he did. Yeah. And I always try to study his game. Obviously, I'm in a different, you know, sure. a, t a different sport than what he does. But I just his determination and you know just relentless game in, effort. relentless yeah. game in game out was he's incredible. the guy that mentioned you know, you know? failing is what made him yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the, the best basketball player to ever yeah. live. Mm -hmm. And so he took that into you know part of his tools on his belt and. Uh, and it never it never went back. And mm. you know I've always been uh, uh, you know next to Cisco, so I've learned uh, in a way um, beca because of our mom, right? And and because of her way of her fundamentals, her foundation, and her way of of, of seeing life and never giving up and always if you're if you're dealt uh, those those lemons, you you make lemonade, right? Mm. And so it doesn't matter what it is in life. Uh, you're there to make sure that what you have, you're going to figure out, okay, what can I do with this? What, what am I going to do with this? What's the next? And then you do it, and what's the next step? Uh, but it, it's been like that for both on and off the field. So, I mean, you know, I, I never played uh, soccer, but I love the sport. Mm -hmm. I absolutely adore it. I wish I could have played. I wish I had the patience for it. I was more of, um, of you know, a football player. No, and, Tony and wanted to hit people. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, wanted. I, that, I, that was his passion. I had just, aggression mm -hmm. a lot, and so if you as I think you should have been a boxer, Tony. Instead. I know, I know. That would have been perfect. I, it would have been awesome. <laughs> Pretty boy, Tony. I would have been yeah, like no. Oscar De La Hoya. No, no, no. <laughs> you would have beat Oscar De La Hoya because Tony. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tony's. Tony has a good punch. You yeah, know, let's he's put got it a good way. left hook, huh? Yeah, he's got a good left. It's funny. I gotta say the story before I forget. I know we're we're no, going go up for it. Yeah, this is what we level. need. We love these stories. So Tony, just I mean, I don't. know. Can I say this? Yeah, you can say of whatever course. you want. Okay. Tony has a passion for fighting. Mm -hmm. He's always has. You know, that's has been his passion. Seriously, yeah. believe it or not, with that pretty face, you know, a lot of people like made the mistake to like tell him things right and tony was just waiting for that opportunity you know what i mean mm -hmm. because tony just he just loved it you know what i mean uh but i, I think tony, punched. I, yeah tony loved really? getting punched so tony's yeah. one of those guys that got in over 300 fights no that's way. the truth yeah. wow yeah. right is that my right I, I i lost count yeah. at one point but yeah. yeah tony lost count so um he, i remember i was there one time and i got to say this because i was so proud of him i was like damn <laughs> you have a job. So yeah. The, well, look at it. it. Yeah. Look at the job, for God's sakes. So there was this time, right? Like the Mexican Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was this time. We're at Taco Bell. Or, oh, God. I don't know if I was there. Was I there? No. No, I'm, you weren't there. I wasn't there, but I heard the heard story. Of, you heard the story. Because from. of people, like, to this day, right? Yeah. Say the story. So this guy just had it for him, right? You know? He didn't like me. And then Tony has, like, 10 or 20 tacos. He's, you know, like. Two or three in the morning, I heard. He's coming out, and this guy just, just his best hit on his, on right on his jaw. Yeah. I think, Tony, did you, like... I Tony, went down to a knee. He went down to a knee. I went down to I mean, a imagine knee. someone taking a full punch. Wow. I mean, I'll get knocked out immediately. And right. so, I mean, so probably be most snoring. of us, right? Right, We'll yeah. be snoring for days, especially that guy. That guy was pretty big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, apparently, this guy was in the same position as him. Like, had fought all these people, and... You know, so this is a battle, it was of, like the, a battle, battle of the two like beasts at the time. There yeah. was like an invisible belt in the middle, right? <laughs> and that day, you know, uh, I think they're very good friends now. They're yeah. good friends. You know, it's good funny how the story today. ends, you know. Yeah. But the guy to this day says, you know, no, I lost that fight against you. And Tony says the same thing. I lost that out fight of respect. Yeah. But oh, I really? think yeah. that's the only tie or that or loss that he thinks he has. But but Tony's always had that that one hit, you know. And I think that perseverance and that and that. You know, when we started this thing, yeah. you know, uh, there's it's it, it's a credit to a lot of people, a credit to a lot of people, a lot of people that donated their time, you know, and I'm talking hundreds, hundreds yeah. from the Mosquetas, 
from, um, I mean, Alfredo there is Guzman. Alfredo Guzman. There's Semetina. hundreds that donated their time to because of what they believed in, you know. And and us as brothers, I mean, we had crazy ideas, but people followed us, and mm-hmm. we just made it happen, you know, not knowing what tomorrow was going to be like, yeah. you know. But uh, one thing that that I knew, you know, someone asked me, I mean, Juan asked us, I think, in, in, in at lunch, he says, you guys build a business with no infrastructure? With no plan. No plan? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I go, it's because of the timing. Yeah. You know, I knew that the players that we have, that one place in Mexico, that they were in their last two years or three years. I knew that. So for the people to see you know what that talent was like mm-hmm. it had to be done and then and there mm-hmm. it had to otherwise fuego would not be what fuego is today if that one team did not accomplish what they accomplished in 2003 when you guys have that established 2002 on every t-shirt or any anywhere it's placed on there that team if we go back to that time and in place and time man that team is the team that went toe-to-toe in the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup against L.A. Galaxy. And there were a bunch of amateurs. But that team competed toe-to-toe against that team, and that's what opened up the eyes you know, to, to the rest of the nation as to what Fuego really was. And uh, to have Fuego back... The name Fuego back here again Mm. one more time. Bro, we've cried about that. And uh, we didn't know. We had no idea what we were building. We had no idea um, what it was going to become. But what we did know is that there was a tremendous pool of talent here in Fresno, um, right here in our backyard, and we needed to do something with that. And... He was a, a, a tremendous example of that. Cisco, um, coming from, um, you know, we mentioned um, Independiente Azul in Culiacán, Sinaloa. We, we come to the States in 1986. We, uh, at the time, he was attending Hamilton. I was attending uh, John Muir. We went to Tehipiti Middle School, uh, Fresno High School, Fresno City, Fresno Pacific, Fresno State. All of those years, every single step of the way, Cisco was competing at the highest level of amateur soccer, knowing the talents that he had, knowing the the, the per- perseverance he had, and, and the fact that he would take no for an answer. And that's what we had right here in Fresno, a bunch of those kids. Hmm. So that team back in 2002 was just a, an accumulation of of many hungry players and that timing that he's talking about had we not done it at that moment um maybe it could have happened we don't know but it needed to happen at that time Mm -hmm. did we have a plan hell no we had no plan our plan was winning that's that that was the only plan And, and our plan was we cannot afford to lose. And how do you, how, I mean, that, that sentiment, that feeling, I mean, that's been in the gut, I feel like, of this club from the inception, right? Mm-hmm. It's like no matter who we play, yeah. no matter where we play them at, mm-hmm. like no matter if they're pros and we're amateurs, we're going to whip their ass today. It, yeah. And that doesn't matter, to be honest with you. Now, you know, yeah. now I've, I've, we, I've had the pleasure to sit back. Well, how long? At least for me, it's been 19 years. For you, it's been about yeah, 10. 16, 10? 10. 10. Yeah. And you realize, like, you know what? It, it's just a, a matter of experience, you know? And, 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 and there's a good, there, you know, and, and there's a couple of diamonds in the rough out there that just don't have that experience to, to, to consistently play at that level. If you play at that level consistently, it, 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 you're, the best comes out of you. Mm-hmm. But you have to put yourself in that position and take risks in life. If you don't take risks in life and you don't, you're afraid of, afraid of failing, you know, and oh, I'm not, I'm just gonna stay in my little bubble and not go and try out for this team or that team or that mm-hmm. team or that team, then you're gonna stay mediocre. And with all due respect, you know, I, I, I say to you myself, you know, when, when I go, when I wanted to go try out, trust me, I was, failing was not an option in my mind, right. you know, but I knew what I had, 
you know, and what I had to offer. So to me, it's it's you know, it, it, we're as good as our mindset. And and to me, it's it, it, it's if it, if you're angry, if you're hungry, and you want you know what you want, you should be able to get it. Oh, well, it's with a, it's the right a, fight, you know. And I yeah. and I think it, it preparation because I think a lot of people think that oh, I'm not going to prepare for this. I'm going to prepare halfway. Seriously, if I tell people how long I practiced and how long I worked, you know, there was a point for about three years. I was waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to practice running. I would would, uh, go to school at 6 to Fresno Pacific. Mm -hmm. Then I would work at 12. Then I would go back to school. Then I would go back to practice. Then I would go back to work. Then I had to, and I would clock off, clock out around... I don't know, sometimes 12, one, and then back again three hours later. So if you, you know, that's the commitment that I had. And in my mind, I knew what I wanted to do, but I knew that I I needed the experience Mm -hmm. to make it happen. And so how did you, well, one one part that really hits home, I think, for me that you talk about is like the risk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you guys are successful entrepreneurs now, you're business owners. Um, you created and established and ran such a successful, one of the most successful PDL franchises in the entire country. Mm-hmm. And risk is a big part of that. I think there's a lot mm-hmm. of people that, that are afraid of failure. Mm-hmm. And they're so afraid of failure that it stops them from achieving some of their goals. And you guys weren't afraid of that. And, and now, like, to see where, where the Fuego, you know, hopefully is, is at and where it's going and all these things, there's a lot of risk involved mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. financially emotionally i mean all of these things that people are putting their money where their mouth is they are putting our time and our effort into trying to 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 continue on this mm-hmm. journey and um and i think sometimes like the people who are willing to put up the most risk man i mean it's a special type of person that does that and, and it is how did you transition from being a player uh you know, into kind of more of the leadership role, into more of guiding the franchise and then eventually getting it to a point mm-hmm. where you guys got to Chickchancy Park. How did that go? I'm going to take this one real quick. Yeah, take just it in all. Just real and, quick. Because okay, I think we so, both have different points of view. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. um, here's Cisco, right? And he tells me, I have a great idea. I need you to come down to Mexico. I want you to see what I have uh, a vision of. And, and I want you to tell me if, if, if I'm out of my mind or if, if you think it can work. So I go down to Mexico. He shows me all these facilities here, there, everywhere. We're traveling everywhere, man. And he's like, look, man, I need you to see this because I want to take this and build it in Fresno. And I want to be able to, the only way that it can succeed is by us being able to grab the best people to help us build it. The best people need to uh, help us out. So when you go back, you start talking to all the other people because I'm coming back. And it's almost like as if you knew at that time that you weren't that you were going to leave the game that he loved so much, man. And I was like appalled by that because here's a guy who is about to make it to the cream of the crop in Mexican soccer, professional level, the highest level in Mexico. And he's talking about leaving. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you can talk about that Mm -hmm. piece because that's, that's your portion. But when it did happen, and I did see all of this stuff and, and said, you know what? We can build something like this in Fresno. It, we can. It, it's, it's possible. Um, all the pieces were there. It just needed someone to put the pieces together. And that's really all we did. Mm-hmm. We grabbed a whole bunch of people from way back, the, the Mexican soccer club, Mexico soccer club mm-hmm. people, uh, the, the Tuleri Agrenze people, um, now we 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 told, told everybody. The, there were so you know? many people that we included to be able to build this thing, and then all of a sudden, Cisco's back. Um, at that time, um, we we had we we built a business, right? A soccer store, you know, merchandising, uniforms, all that stuff, cleats, whatever, and we 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 started to 
tell people, hey, we're going to build this. We're going to build this. We're going to build get this. Get ready. Get ready. Uh, get get ready. ready for this. You know, and 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 so we we had one soccer store downtown uh, at the Crest Theater. That's where it initially started. We called it DeCisco Soccer because uh, no one knew who Tony was. So if we called it to <laughs> Tony, they'd be like, who the hell is that guy? But, to, you know, Cisco Soccer. Right. And so everybody knew he played in Toros Nessa. And people were like, oh, man, you played there. You played with Mohamed. You played with Boni Ruiz. Oh, my God. You know, all this stuff, which was mm-hmm. awesome. And I've always been his number one supporter. I mean, now his wife, you know, Laura, you know, what's up, girl? But, <laughs> but uh, just saying, I've always been there to support his ideas and his thought processes because he does have a tremendous mind. And, you know, from there, when we ended up um, coming over here to Fresno with this idea, um, Cisco's like, we're back here. We need to build this. We need, we need, um, we've got all the pieces. We've got the soccer store. How much do we need? And at that time, we, we ended up talking to uh, mm. Alfredo Guzman. And Alfredo is like, hey, there's an opportunity. San Luis yeah. Obispo, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Roadrunners. We go out there. Uh, bl- we end up buying this team with, with um, I think it was like $38,000 cash, man, at that time. Yeah, we paid cash. We, uh, we paid shoe cash. Shoebox. Yeah. yeah that, it that was, was shoebox. The, the good old Kelmy shoebox, yeah. man. I remember that. Uh, Kelmy's a, a, a Spanish brand, uh, cleats. Uh, we put all the money in there and, and, and bought the franchise, not knowing uh, what was yet to come. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, we start thinking about the name. Uh, who came up with the name? Was it? Uh... You know, I, I want to go back a little bit before you mentioned that. Uh huh. Um, Tony doesn't give himself enough credit, but you know, he always says he follows me. But in reality, without his support, there's no way I would have continued to yeah. put this together. Because in reality, you know, um, I'm going to tell you one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. But actually, it just, you have to understand it. You know what I mean? Uh, he mentioned earlier, and, and uh, I know we, we've left off several subjects. I think kind of we're like picked up another. But uh, but I think this is important to know, too. Um, when we started a soccer store, we actually started bringing merchandise from Mexico directly. Yeah. And we started, and we, our vision was to sell it on the field. So we actually prepared one time, the first time, to sell it in Madeira, right? And you have to keep in mind, right, that I just played a final a year ago yeah. like even if even though if i was on the bench i still was there you mm-hmm. know what i mean sure and then all of a sudden at my peak i'm selling shoes i'm selling you know like a year and a half later you know so yeah. i left todos nessa because i wanted to i just didn't see myself there one night and seriously I, I i'm gonna say this and i don't mean to get religious or anything like that it was just one night i had a dream, and it's like God told me, get your stuff and go. It was at 12 o'clock at, to this day, I remember, on a yeah. Wednesday. So I grabbed my Jeep, just came down here. I thought he was nuts. And and keep in mind, I had fought my whole life to get there. Mm. I had asked the team to drop me to an A-League team because I wanted to play. I don't want to sit on the bench anymore. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I could beat this guy. But in soccer, yeah. the goalkeeper has the least possibility to step on the field. And I was like, okay, I've done it before, and I'm going to do it again. Yeah. I asked him to drop me to, you know, Zacatepec. And they didn't want to. They didn't want to. They didn't want to. So I think one day I just grabbed my stuff and left. Yeah. You know? Then they told me that I had the contract to, to come back, and I just didn't want to come back after that. And it was it's disappointing because I couldn't see myself wasting my years on a bench, you know? Because everything's about timing, you know? If, if you know, the team was the hottest it's ever been during the time where I was sitting on the bench. Uh, I, even though I lacked the experience and I was playing in second division, I visioned, envisioned myself on the field. But, you know, Pablo Larios is probably one of the best, in my eyes, the best goalkeeper with the best mind that's played the game. You know? What would you, I mean, if you could step back into that year mm-hmm. and, and give advice to yourself now, what would it be? You know what? Um, I, I think... I, when I was there, I mean, the team cared so much about me that I didn't even know, know it until now that I look back. They hired a referee named uh, uh, 
Bonifacio Nunez, I think it was his name, which is like the main one of the main referees in Mexico. They hired him to be my mentor because I was starting to lose it a little bit because I was I was alone in the city that I had yeah. that it was so big, and all I did was practice second division, practice first division, you know, and then I started getting into partying a little bit, which. You know, Enrique Mesa, the coach at the time, dropped me a couple times to second division, told me to stay there to learn a lesson. But, you know, I was always able to pick myself up. But, you know, um, being there is just, it, it was, it was a, what was your question? I'm sorry. It was what, what advice would you give yourself yeah, if, if you could then. do that oh, with your perspective then, it, now? Yeah. yeah it's, it, would it, you do it, the same thing? I would thing? think I would be more disciplined, a little more disciplined, and I would pick up the weights more because I was just more natural talent. I didn't have to do weights, but I probably would have been maybe 20% I remember one time I better. saw him, he was so skinny yeah. when I went over there. He had so many veins. I mean, it was all, like, even on, remember your, forgive me for saying this, but even on his ass, like, there <laughs> was my veins. Ass, the I was like, holy shit. And I was, like, touching it. I mean, I'm his brother. I can do this, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm like, holy crap. And he's like, stop grabbing my ass. I'm like, <laughs> no, dude, you have crazy veins. Like, how was that happening? Mm -hmm. Like, he was so like, skinny. I had, like, such, zero fat almost. In you such know? shape. I mean, it was insane. I had never seen that in my mm -hmm. life. The striations were ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see that. The, the striations in, in, in Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's got some crazy. But but that's because he picked up weights. Right. No. Had he done the same I, thing? I wish I would have done that. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have picked that from him. Uh, I, I didn't think I needed it. But yeah. I really, now that I look back, I think I could improve my game probably 20 25% more. Mm -hmm. So I think if I was to tell players out there what to do, um, see, I was in a goalkeeper position. So, yeah. you know, being a field player, being a goalkeeper is two different positions. Sure. You know? Uh, being a goalkeeper, I, I always I knew that I had to have hops. I mm -hmm. knew that. So you didn't want extra weight on you that would prevent you. from No, that. what I did is I I love basketball. I love the game of basketball. So I would play all the time, and that helped me so much with my leaping ability yeah. that people like like it's something that people are missing nowadays. I mean the cry. Yes. I mean even when I was growing up, it's just like you play all the sports, yeah. and now mm -hmm. it's so sport specific. You're not getting right. a ton of cross training between all you these different it. athletes, and you I think it. it's really important. And, yeah. and, and the cross training in Mexico, they implement it. Do they? You have cross training. That's mm -hmm. that's always been, you know, uh, running on gravel, sand. That's part of your your you know your workout, and I think that's what kind of makes uh, you know the difference. It's just you know. Uh, I think the player today has to be a lot more disciplined in the sense where you, if you think two, two three-hour practices is going to make you better, no, I think you have to put in more time. You know, you have to dedicate yourself and your life to to whatever you're going to do. If you want to play soccer, well, yeah. got to put that extra time in, whether or not someone's training you or not. Mm -hmm. I pretty much train myself because we didn't have the money to train. Mm -hmm. You know, I trained myself yeah. all the time just by – and my mentor was actually – television channel 21 you we know? used to we used to as kids <laughs> I know him. we used yeah. to <laughs> yeah as kids we used to uh, uh pick cans you know like th there were garbage cans back in the day in alleys right big big garbage cans we used to pick cans like the aluminum cans so that he would have the best gloves yeah the best cleats the best outfit he'd be like the most neoned out guy out there <laughs> kind of like uh what the heck was that guy's name campos guy, yeah about, jorge campos uh, yeah i mean that guy is ugly compared to cisco <laughs> but but he, cisco always looks so good out there man he always had all these these uh you know ask jaime ramirez like uh, coach jaime uh loves cisco uh but even even uh even Jaime will tell you um, that the, not only does he have the talent, that not only does he have the ability uh, to to kind of uh, the the intuition, right? The intuition, that that perception that you could see the two three steps ahead. I mean, Cisco's hat he had it all, and that's what Jaime saw. He saw that at Fresno High. Yeah, he did. At Fresno High School, mm -hmm. actually, Joel Ramirez saw yeah, he that. He did. Boy. You know. And, and then that's how Jaime started coming to the games. Mm -hmm. and, uh, see, but, it, I mean, I don't know how he got into that subject, but would you, would you tell yourself today, stay here in Mexico, or would you say, I'm out? Today? Yeah. I don't regret anything. 
You know why? Because I look back now and look what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, this is an amazing story that includes thousands of people. Yeah. I personally wouldn't have it any other way. The level of impact that you've been able to make by making that decision yeah. as, as a group and, and you guys and so many more people, but the amount of lives that you've impacted in such yeah. a positive way by making that decision, yeah. I mean, that had to be the man upstairs telling you that because, mm -hmm. I mean, who you know, who knows what would have gone if you would have sat on the bench for three or four more years and then what happens I, in I didn't life, want you know? I, I, you know, and I think as a player, yeah. you right. have to be patient for your turn. I just didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have been more patient, but in reality, I look back today and I was like, you know what? I, I made the right choice. This was the path. This, this was is my the path. path you were meant This for. is my path, you know? And so, so f fast forward a little bit. Obviously, the team's having success. It moves into Chansey Park. Yeah. It's hitting new heights. I mean, at the time, I remember when I kind of first came on and uh, it was 2012, 11, 12, yeah. You know, everything was in Spanish. All the PA announcement was in <laughs> Spanish. All the yeah. tickets were free. And mm -hmm. it was my kind of first experience. I grew up playing soccer um, when I was a young kid. Played at Ewing Turner, which was like a it kind of, I think it was part of the Roosevelt group. I don't even know. It was wreck. I was not mm -hmm. good. Um, I was a <laughs> little chubby both, kid buddy. running around just kicking the ball as far as I could. But I, I loved it. And But I got away from the sport. So when I, when I kind of came back and began working, uh, for the Grizzlies, and then part of my job was to help out at the Fuego games. I'm like, this shit is phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. And everybody needs to experience this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And slowly over the next couple of years, it seemed like there was this rapid um, acceleration in the evolution of soccer yeah, in the yeah. United States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it was no longer in Fresno just the Mexican guys are watching no, soccer. No, no. It, like every group was watching. And now yeah. it wasn't just, hey, I played soccer as a kid. It was mm -hmm, like, yeah. hey, I like Liverpool. I mm -hmm. like yeah. America. I like whoever. Right. And you started following it. And you see kind of the, the crowd start to shift. And two years later, mm -hmm. we get fire squad in. And all of a sudden, like, damn, this is a thing. Yeah. I mean, what is going through your mind at the time thinking like, look what we started. Now there's thousands of people. There's people that are wearing the gear. There's people that live their lives to mm -hmm. go to games on the games. weekends, like what does that feel like? It's everything we wanted uh, from it, the very beginning. It, I, I we really we knew it could happen. Yeah, we knew it could happen. We knew it was going to take. I mean, we have to give a shout out to because you know I don't want to take all the credit ourselves and and the yeah. people that yeah. helped us build it, but also the Marcus, you know, family, you know, Jaime, Marcus Senior, and Junior, Anna, Anna okay, Marcus. and the Marcus, you know, without their support, this probably wouldn't have been here i don't know but uh, and anna plays a special role right? yeah, anna, it, we'll, special we'll role. talk about that yeah. because a lot of people do not know that story with mm -hmm. that has to be told that story yeah. that story has to be told yeah. i will touch on it but uh, coming from i think 10 hats a pizza tony because we carried about 10 hats a piece yeah, each <laughs> like you have yeah, to understand yeah. like i was so exhausted after every game like you remember we were running a business full time mm -hmm. we were going to school full time yeah we were we we were running an operation, you know, Fuego, and we had to set up, you know, we had twenty four hours before because we wanted everything to be perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alfredo was a big part of that because yeah. he was no, this has to be, this has to be there, right. everything has to be there because we knew we had the team to show a great product on the field. Right. Mm -hmm. We were like, just wait until you see it, people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. I knew mm -hmm. we were going to win. And you had to fit. I mean, you think about that portion of it, right? Like, we mm -hmm. knew the talent was here. Yes. We knew. knew the talent was here. And where are you going to play? How are you going to do tickets? How are you going to market it? Like, you finally, over the course of shit, 10 plus years, mm -hmm. figured out how to package it properly. Mm -hmm. And then, bam. And how was the media going to follow you? Right. Yeah. How are they going to follow you when you have the giant of Fresno State? You have all these other teams. Yeah. But I knew that this team. And we didn't have social media. And we have social media. No social so media it was then. so hard to, word of mouth. To, mm -hmm. to get to that point. I know it was. Yeah. But I think, you know, for carrying 10 hats each, um, uh, I, 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 you know, when I transitioned from one, um, being in one position to the other, when we joined partnership with the Cummings. Mm -hmm. um, shout to out me, to the Cummings. To, yeah, yeah, shout out to the Cummings. Yep. Those, those guys are amazing, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there were the other part that came in that, mm -hmm just made us stronger mm -hmm. yeah. and and i knew once we were had the platform it was you know people are worrying for a surprise mm -hmm. you know always thinking like man i wish a lot of people would have saw the first team which a lot of people did because i think um when we played at 
what was it? Clovis High School? Was it Clovis High School? Yeah, Clovis High School against the Galley Galaxy, did we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we played did. and the people saw the product. They were like, Oh, smoke. This is the real feel. Yeah. You know? Um Alexi Lawless. Alexi Lawless here. and all those players, Kobe, Kobe Jones. Jones is here. Mm-hmm. Um at Clovis at La Monica Stadium. At La Monica Stadium. Wow. We packed. And we packed you know? that. Yeah. We packed so, that house. So going from, you know, playing to like Ste- you know, sitting on uh, uh, sitting outside and just drinking ten beers. I was like, man, this is the best. You know, because you get you yeah, yeah, twelve yeah. or thirteen. Because <laughs> you know what? We I wanted. I think every time I went to the stadium, we went. Our mission was like, hey, let's get lit. Yeah. Because yeah, not to you know, we're, we don't cause trouble. We just want to enjoy what we were not able to enjoy the first. Is it five, six years? Yeah, literally. Like five, six years? Yeah, because, we couldn't sit back and actually yeah. relax and watch a game. It, and it, still to this day, I, I remember at, the, at all the games, I'm going up to you guys, and you're oh, having a good old time. Yeah, going, we're like, why isn't he not putting this guy in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy on the field, he missed this assignment. Like, you're in it. You're still in it, no matter yeah, because, what. 100%. You know what? Because if I was on the field, I would call him out straight mm. out. That's who I am. A lot of people hate me for it. And a lot of people love me for it. <laughs> I really didn't care because when it's on the field and yeah. you're affecting our game, yeah. if I'm that player, and I told Jaime Ramirez since the beginning, this is the standard that I had or we had, everyone had. But I said, listen, I know I'm part owner of this deal, but if you don't think I'm the best man for that position, then you go ahead and choose that man. But do not pick me just because I'm part yep. owner. Because mm-hmm. if you do that, like you're failing as a coach, mm-hmm. you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no special him, out, treatment. There's no special yeah. treatment, and yeah. you know it, it, he he did put the best players out there. That's why the team is well known. But those are the things that made this team. You know, yeah, uh, you team. as an as a part owner, you're like, no, the best product's going to go on the field, even if you're not the best product. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the standard that I had in my mind, and we had in our mind, because to me is it's about giving a show. Not and in what, in 14 seasons, was there ever a losing season? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, no, no. we've never. No. I think the team won, like, maybe, and I'm just guessing this. That's a good kind of stat to look at. I think we won, like, 85 to 89% of our games, I think, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was one year where you we we ended up 50-50, but it's because it was going through the transition, yeah. you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. a, it, it, and, we, and, we were the nomads. We had no home. Sure. And yeah. we even played at Central High School. God, that was terrible. Yeah. N- not Central High School itself. I'm just saying we were, w- that year we went to just, Hamford. Just not having a home consistent. Yeah. Nini that. told us a story last time he was on the podcast. He's oh like, I remember Lord. I was playing and I ran off the field and then there's pigs oinking right next to the, like, it yeah. was crazy. That, that, was playing central. Off that was a Central. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. That yeah. was a Central. We were yeah, like, oh, that was gosh. Bad. You know? Oh, but yeah. I mean, so much success, right? So much growth. People are really getting behind it. And then, you know, Fresno FC comes into town. We can go down that whole rabbit hole. We don't need to. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, it, it's kind of gone from from your ranks anymore. And it's in somebody else's hand. And the team goes away. And it leaves this, like, it's for the community, it leaves a pit in your mm-hmm. stomach knowing that, like, man, we had something special and it's not here anymore. I mean, what did, you know, knowing that kind of in-between time where there was no team, I mean, how did that feel for you guys? Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. I think people got cheated. I think the league, and I'm going to say this and I don't care, yeah. the league did something, you know, very selfish. I mean, they were completely selfish on this move. And I think they've acknowledged that throughout the time. Because if you would have studied our market, you would have not grabbed those $5 million for that franchise. You never understood our market. So to me, you know, they owed this to Fresno. That's the least they could have done when they come in and destroyed everything. That's what they did. Fresno FC did, did some good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you know, the league is supposed to protect you, especially if you know the numbers. Yeah. If we knew the numbers, you knew the numbers. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? We knew the numbers. Yeah. It was not feasible at the moment. Uh, there, was, the, you know, yeah. there were certain things that have to be done for this team to succeed. And you know some of the things that we're doing now. Yep. And I'm so proud of that, you know. But the thing is, I felt like the league just backdoored us and slapped us in the face and did not respect one bit of the history we created 
for the sport. Mm-hmm. The print was there, right? The print was there. Um, success, um, and and you could have just pick that up and continued running with it. Um, I'm not gonna say that the name Zoros wasn't cool because it was. Mm-hmm. It was I thought the mascot cool. was pretty cool. Yeah, the mascot then, was real that cool. was pretty that freaking ma- I think cool. The, ma- the mascot the, is. I thought that was genius, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Fuego the Fox. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah, is he coming back? I don't know. I don't we'll know. See. He's a free agent. I heard. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I think I heard, I heard Andrea there. got it. Got has his right. Has his rights. Has the rights. Has we'll the have rights. To, <laughs> might have to buy it off of her. <laughs> but the print was there. Everything yeah. was there, right? Um, and 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 that could have been picked up. A lot of things could have been done differently. Um, but in the same sense, let me let me kind of. Uh, counter what you just stated because mm-hmm. I agree with everything you said, Cisco. But in the same sense, when Cisco <coughs> decided to leave Mexican uh, professional soccer, had that not happened, we probably wouldn't be talking about Fuego today. Had the Zoros thing not occurred, we as a community probably would not be appreciating Fuego as much today. Sure, I agree with that. And and so. Mm-hmm. Things need to happen in order for us to be able to really embrace and appreciate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm glad Fuego is back. I'm glad the people behind it are the, the, the right people behind it because it's like you guys are picking up where we left off. And it's as if... Uh, this whole two-year span uh, never occurred. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it takes it takes a lot of learning. I mean, you guys talked about learning from mistakes, right? Learning, and I think there's a lot to learn in in uh, in the evolution of this soccer thing. Obviously, I've got to see kind of the second iteration of the Fuego, which was the time at Chickasaw Park, mm-hmm. um, my time at FC, and and now where we're at today. And I think. You know, one of the things I speak deeply about with you guys is is a connection into our community mm-hmm. and feeling like that the people really know that this is their club. Mm-hmm. This represents Sanger and Parlier and Dinuba mm-hmm. and all of these, yeah. you know, all these small communities that make up this rich soccer tradition that we have. Yeah. And I think it's um, it was a mistake to say we're bringing you professional soccer now. No. This is a platform to showcase the people in our valley that are already performing at a professional level. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was, you know, one of the things that I always like bump heads with certain people that I'm not going to mention is the fact that I knew that there was six to nine players that could play on that team. Yeah, and it was one of the most frustrating things <laughs> watching every game in and out. And I think I drank. Three more beers than I did during the football season, <laughs> but I was always like, "Man, I just need me to too. like, like." It's funny because, I mean, common sense to me, common sense, and I mean, and you don't have to know about soccer that much to understand what I'm about to say. European soccer cannot work on that Chichancy field. Why? Small field. Small field. Common sense. You have to play a different game. Mm-hmm. So therefore, that formula. It's out the door. It was, yeah. was you know, it, it was made to fail. Yeah. And that, I mean, I saw that since the beginning of practice when I heard certain things, and I'm like, it's okay, but. So what do you think? I mean, obviously, uh, so we've we've learned from some of those mistakes. We mm-hmm. hope, right? And so now, what do you want to see? Uh, you know, as as people that are the creators of this, mm-hmm. um, what is your hopes to see in this next phase? I think the the people involved are the right people, um, mm-hmm. starting from the the administration part to the people uh, directing on the field. I, I, I believe uh, the right people have been chosen. Um, I think that knowing each other well is going to create a very successful venture. And it takes a lot of, like we've been talking, it takes a lot of experience. Um, winning, losing, experiences to be able to get there. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that Cisco has, uh, we, we talk a lot about that. 
um, and and we we go back and forth. There's no bickering. Mm-hmm. It's just more like, this is my opinion. This is you know, and we kind of go back mm-hmm. and forth. He has his opinions as well, um, and and kind of like how he has mentioned earlier, uh, some people don't like him because he's brutally honest. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing wrong with brutally honest. You just have to sit there and and listen to it, and and absorb it and really take it for what it is um and 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 try to say okay it, is there some truth to that mm-hmm. and and so at times you know while uh, i've listened to him say some brutal things i'm like shit man that's that's pretty real mm-hmm. and, and so um at the at at this venture right now i think all the right people all the right pieces are there and uh and I'm really, really looking forward to. Yeah, I think you know, uh, winning. The the right moves have been made. Number one, I think. Um, I think whatever team was to come here, whether it was Fuego or not, or maybe an MLS team in the future, which I think we have the potential to get no. there. Um, I think the initial groundwork is the right one, which is the foundation. It's the facilities. That's the primary thing we need to do. Amen to that. Because without that, yeah. it's kind of like you have holes in your pockets. Keep filling it up with money and it just doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't last you. That's how we, we were. That's the big part, the, big, the biggest part that we learned. Yeah. That we need our own facilities to be able to keep most of that money. You know, create, you know, um, yeah, culture. I can't say too many things, but you know, you, you, the right moves are being created too. Yeah. Um, the people, the people that are like you yourself. You know, you've earned your way up here. No one got you here. Into that. Thank you, you and, and and Jeremy. You know, which I have really a lot of love for. Um, you guys earned your way up here. No one gave it to you guys. You know, and I think you're. Sim- that's why we connect so much because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, we care. We ultimately care. But we want to see the standard product. We don't want to see a rundown product. And, you know, we have standards. And that standard is high. And I think the moves that you guys are making right now, Mm -hmm. you know, from the staff and everyone else is the right people. And these are good people that are going to take you beyond what their responsibilities are. You know, some people ask us, how did you get so many people on board to like donate their time. People saw our heart. People saw that we were just, we were not there for the money. We were there just for the game. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, from Jaime Ramirez to, you know, the players, the players made a big sacrifice. Yeah. Because the players, you got to understand, as a player, you're at the end of your career, as, as amateur career, because you want to continue, you know, whatever degree you got you want to continue as a professional right mm-hmm. yeah so everybody's at the end of their career meaning like 26 to yeah, 32 yeah lifespan of the players not long yeah not and, long. and it's like yeah. and that's what i really appreciate the you know the the Souzas, the delgadillos the Derek lopez the ninos yeah. Yeah. the fabricios you know the uh edgardo contreras you know those guys made a huge sacrifice. If I don't say Dean, oh Dean, uh, oh, no, 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 yeah, I gotta say, we gotta say his name. He's a Cinderella, so I gotta <laughs> talk to, I gotta talk about him. Yeah, you know, these guys made a huge sacrifice for that this team could be here. You know, and I'm, and I know I'm, I'm not mentioning a lot of players, so please don't get mad. Yeah, you know, but those are the players that that I will like for there to be a special something special for them. Sure, you know? because those are the guys that should go on that. Um, for lack of a better word, I don't know. Uh, Hall of Fame or something. Hall yeah. of Fame. Or they should, you know, build a statue of them. Because, I don't know, those are the guys that sacrifice the most. Those are the guys that yeah. put this team on the map, you know. And it's those- true, 100%. I mean, we talk about it often internally now. It's yeah. like, what things can we game plan and do uh, mm-hmm. to include the alumni into this because they set the foundation for what we have today. They set the standards for what we have mm-hmm. today. And I was talking to Nini on the last podcast about, you know, that first team playing the Galaxy and setting that high standard and having some of the players walk into the locker room and say, hey, mm-hmm. you guys is you guys are a real deal. This mm-hmm. is a real team. Be proud of who you are. Mm-hmm. And I think 
those people need to be honored and be they part do. of this. And, and, and I, I'll continue to say it, and I know our ownership continues to say it, this is a, this is a family effort, mm-hmm. not just from our internal staff, but there is a Fuego family out there of people Mm -hmm. who have put blood sweat and tears into years and years and years of this and those people cannot be forgotten they have Mm -hmm. to be included in it and i think that's why we've tried to have so many listening sessions and phone calls and Mm -hmm. we talk late at night and early mornings and just (laughs) bouncing ideas off each other i call you guys and you guys call me and it's like this is going to take an army of people to be successful and there's been this incredible evolution of playing out in random fields, buying a team with a shoebox full of money, right? Yeah. <laughs> to hopefully getting to a place now where we're you know, going to have a complex mm-hmm. and a stadium and thousands of fans having a professional experience. And it's just yeah. there's so much pride in it for so mm-hmm. many people. Um, man, it's special. You know, I, I could tell uh, this is my first time. He, you know, I think I've been to the, the, the first office mm-hmm. a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But just walking in here and seeing the people that you guys have, you, you know, I – you could read through their eyes that they're on a mission too, you mm. know, yeah. and that mission is important. That mission is super, super important. You know, I, I think it, we're off to a great start. I think there's a billions of hours that got to be put in so that this could be, you know, a, a good product. Uh, and I know the standards are high. I know the standards are high and, and I, I, you know, our family, you know, or the Alvarez family, and and I'm sure the Marcus family and all the families that helped are gonna are looking forward to this. Yeah. Are looking forward to this because when the team left, seriously, I think I cried for like 24 hours. You know those days that you like drink so much and you just wake up like you just want to get up. <laughs> That's how I was in tears for yeah. like 24 hours. Sure. And I was super depressed because it was so sad to see something so great go away. Yeah. You know, uh, but like Tony said, you know, sometimes for people to appreciate it, uh, some things, some of these things have to happen. And, yeah. and but you know what? Uh, destiny is destiny, man. And destiny uh, brought the team, about the name back. And yeah. and uh, uh, I believe this team is super lucky. Yeah. But it's not just luck. You know, this team does carry an angel. Yeah. An angel. And I think uh, if we could talk about Anna yeah. Marquez. Um, one of the reasons why this team is here, is because without the financial, you can't do anything. I mean, yep. it's just yeah. a dream, right? It's mm-hmm. just a dream. You can't do anything. Yeah. So one, uh, uh, I remember I told my wife Laura, I said, "Hey, I want to pitch this to your uncle, you know, you know, and blah blah blah." And you know, I could never sit him down, right? And, and it is, I was nervous to talk to him because you know he is who he is, right? Um, so I talked to his wife and I said, "Hey." I have a great idea. I think this could work. You know, because they had already sponsored Mexico a couple mm. of years. Um, I go, this thing needs to be, this team is this good that it needs to be shown to the world or to the nation, you know. And this is how it could benefit you guys, you know. Mm-hmm. The crossover. The crossover to the Anglo to the other market you don't have or right. you already have. And their it. business was thriving at the and time. And was Americano time. was yeah. on its rise in yeah. two locations and yes. they're doing well. Yeah. yeah. So she said, you know what? And then she goes, well, she started asking me questions about the team. I'm like, the team is probably as good as or below a Mexican team that I played for with an exception of three players. The team could do this, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember um, the... Uh, she is the one that gave the green light to him. I don't think otherwise, I don't think he would have done it. He would have just probably thought I was crazy that I was just trying to get another sponsorship, but I wasn't. I was trying to build something that meant something for the city, you know, mm-hmm. that, that that people could see the the talent that, that was here, you know, uh, because it had been tried a couple of times, but it wasn't the right people. Mm. It wasn't the, the it, it wasn't the right people. I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah it wasn't the right people. Yeah. I knew that when I was there, and I was just like shaking my head. But it is what it is. I don't make those calls, you know. Um, but I knew that there was people like Edgardo, Capi. I mean, these are people that could Gabi. help an institution, Fabricio, mm-hmm. that could help an institution to grow. So, long story short, she says yes. She, she kind of forced it. I don't know if she forced him, but. Everybody knows it's yeah, the wife probably, that makes yeah. the decision anyway. I think she, so. the guy did. And um, I think months later, she ended up passing. Mm. You yeah. know? 
And uh, um, it was one of the hardest moments because she was such an angel. And, and everyone that you talk to about her, they speak so highly of her. Yeah. Because she always had, you know, she always cared for the people. Yeah. Always. Regardless, it was about the people. The people, always. the people, the people. And, you know, once she gave the green light and Jaime said, okay, let's do it. it <laughs> you know, I felt... And this is, and I told Tony and I told a couple of people this, you know, I was like, listen, I, okay, you could get lucky or talent could pull maybe two, three, four great wins. But when you have 20 plus, you know, uh, monumental wins, there's a little bit more than that. You know what I mean? Because I think the best call that we got was what Alaves calls us. Yeah. This Alaves plays in first division in Spain against Real Madrid, Barcelona, and they say, hey, guys, we hired you guys are really good. Mm. Would you mind paying our fare of $5,000 to come over to Fresno and play you? They were like, yeah, what? They were coming through here They were coming way. through here either way. But they wanted to stop here and Plus. see what Fuego, because they had heard. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. I mean, so, so we, I mean, th- I mean, those are things that that just connected all the pieces. And like I said, it's you know the team has always had a guardian angel. I've always believed that because miraculous things, like heroic moments, would happen yeah. from the team standpoint, player standpoint, um, that it took this team over the top yeah. immediately. And it's kind of like we had a baby that was just born, and all of a sudden this baby is a teenager. Yeah. So we don't know what we're like. We just don't know what to do, you know, yeah. so fast. And I think I have to mention this because, you know, it's one of those things where where you have to grab when you lose. You have to say, you know what, man, we messed up. You have to laugh about it. You know what I mean? Right. But I think yeah. the city offered us or the county offered oh, us. Oh, God. This is another. I don't know if you know this, this story. This is a big Chris. loss right here. Ooh. So Mike <sighs> Dages. Uh, yes, Mike Dages. Council member at the time. Um uh, he and Alfredo Guzman were talking uh, in regards to some land here in, in. And for the listeners, Alfredo was the first GM. The first, first GM, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, big mentor of ours, friend, family. Um, Lost Lake. 100 acres. 100 acres. 100 acres for $1 a year. And mm-hmm. we had the loan documents with us. They brought him. Oh, God. For. A hundred and that was the years. biggest mistake. Hundred and fifty years, mm. but it was too soon. Everybody was bringing us things, right. and we didn't know what to do with yeah. them. Mm. You know, and that was one of the mistakes. I really, I talked to Terrence Frazier. He goes, "Hey man, if you would have brought me that contract, he goes, I probably would have gave you like twenty million on the spot for it <laughs> yeah. because it's worth a lot it, of money today. it was a lot of money. It's a lot of money today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things where you don't know." It's growing yeah. so fast, and you're like can't catch up to the speed. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it's out of your hands. Sure. And 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 that's what I mentioned. Those things is like, Ana Marquez is 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 is, is the guardian. This team's guardian guardian angel, mm. because so many great things happen. I'm talking telling you things off the field, on the field, awards, players, drafts. I mean, and I think twenty is short. I think. They're yeah. monumental, like maybe 30, 40, 50 monumental moments that the team had. And, mm-hmm. you know, luck, talent can only take you, and money can only take you so far, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. After that, it, it takes a lot more. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot more. And I think yeah. those are the, the you know, those uh, special people in our lives that were a big part of this foundation, yeah. you know, we have to, they have to stay relevant to this team. Mm-hmm. They have to because they belong here. They do. Yeah. And if you don't, if, if if you don't, this is my belief. Okay, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. Sorry, my phone is ringing off the hook, but that's <laughs> the way it is. Um, this team loses a spark. This team loses that that angel fire. that is protect. That, yeah, the fire. You know, yeah. and and we're not alone. You know, in this world. You that's know, right. and I I really believe in that, and I'm a strong believer, and I'll carry that to my grave that. She's a big part to do with this and and uh, and the success of this organization. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful, and I and I know she'll continue on with us. You yes, know? definitely. Yeah. So, kind of two final things to to wrap it up. One, we uh, we started to tell 
Who 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 made up the name? You guys oh. sidetracked from it. Oh uh, shoot, Farfan. How do we sidetrack? Farfan. Uh yeah, Farfan. Farfan. What a name. Farfan. Eric Farfan play. Oh, Eric Farfan, one of the uh, great players yeah. too. Right. Eric yeah. Farfan played. I think it was I don't know Tennessee or somewhere out there. Yeah. And it was it had been already like three, four, five months, and we were like, man, we, I mean, we were thinking about. The Vineyard. I mean, we were thinking about some crazy yeah. names that we didn't want to go stu- with the Vineyard because then they'd call us the Winos. You know, <laughs> yeah. forget about it. We don't. We no. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Fast. So Eric Farfan came up with the name, and uh, Orlando Ramirez drew uh, the logo. The logo. First, first, logo. The first, very logo. first logo. Wow. And I yeah. love that logo. Actually, is this? No. That's this a, is the second, second one. one. Yeah. Second I don't one. know if I have the first one on here. No. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got a couple with the old ones on yeah. there. Yeah. Well, yeah. all right. And so, lastly, you know what? You know your opportunity to kind of say something to the community that's listening mm-hmm. about, you know, why, why to get behind this project, why to get behind the team, you know, what, uh, why does Fuego mean so much to the Central Valley and why should people support it? I, I believe that um, many children out there believe uh, that they can, they see themselves, right? So uh, there's a lot of sports figures. There's a lot of, athletes out there that uh, make a big name for themselves and it's not really to make a big name for yourself but it's more to make uh, to represent yourself to represent your family to represent your community Um, there's many kids that have that dream so many kids Um, when we talk about Fresno when we talk about the valley you know the surrounding cities uh, there are so many talented individuals that have come and gone and we've never heard from them again where are they now it's the same old story right the where are they now right so if we can pull together as a community and really truly talk about a niche product that a community can offer it's it's this sport football I, that's my belief. I wish I would have believed that when I was a kid and not played football. Um, baseball, I still love. Uh, but I wish I would have picked up soccer, football, a lot more than I would have picked up any sport. Um, because it, it, it just, there's too many pieces here in this community that can make, help you succeed, allow you to succeed. And uh, talk about this team talk about the leaders uh, supporting it Um, we can't ask for anything more other than um, support this team and 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 watch it grow watch it grow from here that's what I can you know I I, there's a big shift I think in the in sports there's a big shift Mm -hmm. in sports happening and it's been happening for the past five seven years and I think soccer uh, is becoming the sport if you look at the number of franchises that have opened throughout the country if you look at the number of clubs the number of facilities i think soccer is up there people are investing in the sport i think it would be a huge loss to this community to lose this opportunity that we have to build something great And, and and you know we have the talent that's rare that's super rare because most teams outside that we're competing against, guess what they have to do? They have to go out and recruit. We don't have to. We, you know, maybe we're going to have to in the first couple of years because we've had a couple of years off. But I think, you know, we have to build opportunity for those behind us. And that's our, you know, our children, our children. You know, we have to build opportunity for them. Mm-hmm. And I think um, it's a... It's, uh, you know, Fresno and the surrounding cities are craving it. They're craving for something like this, and they're craving for something like it's about to happen right now. This is well done. This is well built, and is built to stay. Yeah. Because you have ownership of the facilities, then you get to dictate. Yeah. You know, and have and, and and have that security like the fire squad, the vigilantes. They're like, is, is Skolk is you know, are we going to be are we going to be yeah. homeless again? You know what I mean? That's yeah. all the, I felt the same way, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, but this is a great opportunity to rally and give these kids that are coming. Yeah. 
yeah. you know that you know that are the new generations that are coming behind us right and given an opportunity to to blossom mm -hmm. and represent us at the war I mean Fresno seriously if we had all the pieces together back then we no doubt in my mind even uh Jurgen Jurgen Jürgen, Jürgen Klinsmann Jurgen Jürgen. Mm -hmm. Klinsmann said it why are these guys in the MLS he just couldn't understand it. Why? Mm -hmm. He didn't understand what was happening. He, he said it himself. Like, the U.S. has it backwards. And I think those are the adjustments we're, we're making right now as a nation to, to make the right moves, you know. Um, but I believe, you know, Fresno's and the Central Valley is super gifted when it comes down to soccer. You know, that's the reason why we've produced so many players. You know, I think last time I checked, we were – up to 67 players that had an opportunity mm -hmm. to to play pro. Wow. That is yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. That is huge. And there's more to come if you have the right platforms, yep. mm -hmm. if you have the the, the, the program, the, the youth programs, mm -hmm. the facilities, you know, the turn the national tournaments, the state tournaments. I mean, I don't think Fresno hasn't seen any of that yet. Yeah. But the way it's being done right now. This will be the Mecca. This will be the Mecca, yeah. you know, in, this, in, in California. Yeah. And I, I strongly believe that. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Well, mm -hmm. thank you guys for your, your time. I love you guys. Always love, love you. you guys. No, we love you too, Chris. You guys are awesome. So thank yeah. you so much, and we'll see you next time. Thank All you. Right. Guys.